welcome back to our uh, last session on this uh, story of complex numbers and complex analysis uh, i have more or less covered everything that is there in your syllabus why more or less i don't think i left anything uh, today i'll take this opportunity to solve a few questions uh, which are part of uh, your model question papers normally i won't do this but because of this uh, extraordinary situation due to covid uh, i thought giving you explicit solutions might help some of you so this lecture i'll use to solve uh, more or less all the questions which are there in the model question papers released by the university uh, some preface before i start uh i very emphatically advise students not to peek at the solution question papers are available you please see the model question paper and try solving on solving these questions on your own if you can't and if you have tried your best only then you check answers or how to do from this lecture otherwise i very much encourage you to solve all problems on your own okay so the very first question is state and prove cauchy's theorem uh most of these problems which are going to come up in this today's lectures have most of them have been done already so it's going to be a recap uh, some exact numerical problem which is given in this question paper may not have been done so i am going to show you them uh, so the first question is state and prove cauchy's theorem this is a standard thing which we have done already in our lecture so recall what is uh, statement of cauchy's theorem uh, if f is analytic at all points inside and on and on a simple closed curve then integral of f of z dz over c is zero so my f is analytic in this whole region r particular in particular i want it to be analytic on and inside this simple closed curve c then integral of f z dz is zero this is the statement of cauchy's theorem how do i prove this so i have already told you proof of cauchy's theorem essentially uses uh, analyticity of f in the form of cauchy riemann equations which means whenever i have uh, a function to be analytic i have to use cauchy riemann equations uh, and also it uses green's theorem uh, which what does green's theorem do it converts an integral along a path into a surface integral in a region this is something you have to recall from what you have done before so with these hints you should try to construct the proof yourself so this page is what you see on your screen is essentially a hint to remember proof of cauchy's theorem so cauchy's theorem i know f is analytic which means i have to use cauchy riemann equations which means you must know you must try to recall what are cauchy riemann equations and then it also uses green's theorem what does green's theorem do any integral on a particular not any integral there are some conditions are there on the function which are satisfied of course in case of this statement of cauchy's theorem uh, some integral which is uh, some integral which is actually an integral along a path is i'm going to convert that integral into a surface integral in a region that is what green's theorem says so let me give the details i have already given the details in the lecture now i'll very briefly recall all this so let fz be u plus iv so if i want to use cauchy riemann equations i'll try to write it in cartesian coordinates etc etc so z is equal to x plus i y u f is equal to u plus iv i substitute both these here and rewrite this integral as sum of two real integrals in fact all complex integrals for us have been sum of real integrals so actually we have not done anything new we have just converted the complex integrals into real integrals and uh, this is how you do fz dz u plus iv into dx plus i dy is u dx minus v dy i square v dy that is minus i dy plus i times v dx plus u dy so i'll call this i1 plus i times i2 this first integral i'll call it i1 and second integral i called it i2 and recall what did green's theorem say it said if i have an integral along a path which looks like some function into dx some integral of some function dx plus in integral of some function 
dy m and n are real valued functions in both the variables x and y then i can convert this into this which is a surface integral over d of del n by del x minus del m by del y so this is the, this is differentiated with respect to x and this is differentiated with respect to y and their difference is taken and i integrate over dx dy this is what i'll use for my uh, uh, cauchy's theorem so m dx would be i'll write this in in the form of see for each integral for i1 this is m dx plus n dy so m of that form so that means m is u and n is minus v for this integral m is v and n is u so i have to apply green's theorem twice once for this integral once for this integral so we have done this so i'll very quickly go through this uh, since f is analytic cauchy riemann equation says that uh, del u by del x is equal to del v by del y and del u by del y is equal to minus del v by del x and use green's theorem now i1 is u dx minus v dy that means you differentiate this with respect to x this means minus v because m dx plus n dy form was what it was so this is minus v so del of minus v by del x minus del u by del y dx dy uh, but this is zero because you see this is nothing but minus vx minus u y uh here it is these two are equal so v minus vx is equal to uy so minus vx means vx means differential of partial derivative of v with respect to x so minus del v by del x is equal to del u by del y so minus del v by del x minus del u by del y is zero so this integrand itself is zero so this i1 is zero similarly for i2 you take this as m and this as n again you get del m by del n by del x minus del n by del y so this is again cauchy uh, the cauchy riemann equation here it says del u by del x is nothing but del v by del y uh, so this is zero by uh, uh, cauchy uh, the green's theorem so i2 is also zero uh, so integral f dz which is what we started with fz dz is i1 plus i2 uh, which is uh, zero so the sum of these integrals is zero both the integrals are zero so sum of this integral is zero this completes the proof of cauchy's theorem so try to recall how do you try to remember this you use cauchy riemann equations you use green's theorem so you must remember all these things only then you can uh, complete the proof question 2 state and prove cauchy's integral formula these are two you know <laughs> from examination point of view one of these has to come if somebody wants to ask you to prove some theorem either that or this we know only two theorems from this particular module so the statement is so better you better learn both the uh, theorems uh, as part of your study uh, proof of both the th uh, theorems so a statement of cauchy's integral formula is the following let f be an analytic function within and on a simple closed curve c and a be a point inside c then this i have told this integral value of this integral is decided by value of f at a so the nice looking form is for the statement f of a is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral of fz by z minus a dz as i told mostly we will use this in the form of integral of fz by z minus a dz is equal to 2 pi i f a uh, so oh the proof is what i had to give okay so let r be a region r be the region where f is analytic remember i have to start with the analytic function so in some region so i'll call it r and in this region f is analytic and c is a simple closed curve in r and a is a point in c Uh, the statement is the formula is that f of a the value of f of f at a is 1 by 2 pi i times integral of this as i said again i'm risking uh, boring you by emphasizing this this formula looks nice this way but mostly we use this formula to evaluate this integral fz by z minus a over c is 2 pi i times f a uh, so how do i prove this you consider a small circle around a small circle small means this whole circle must be contained completely within c 
So what is the equation of that circle? Z is equal to a plus r i theta, r e power i theta. So this is a circle which is centered at a and radius r. <coughs> Uh, so this is a circle which is completely contained within my C1. That means F is completely analytic. Ah, okay, that's what I have to show. I'll show you. I'll tell you how to use this. So first I consider this circle, and then whatever function I have, I will try to see what happens to that function within this region outside this C1 and inside C. That's how it proceeds. So in the shaded area shaded region between C and C1. That's what I was telling you. So here is C and here is C1, the region between them, that is this annular region is what we called. In this region, you consider this function Fz by Z minus A. See, you t see this Fz is analytic everywhere. Everywhere means at least in R, at least in the region under consideration. When you say, when you talk of Fz by Z minus A, clearly Z minus A is not defined at A. So any point, any region which includes Z equal to A, this function is not defined only. So there's a forget about it being analytic, it's not even defined. So it's definitely not analytic. So what we did in this case is very cleverly constructed a region which will not include A. The region under consideration is between C and C1, this annular region. So basically I considered C and made a hole around A. So the remaining region, my Fz by Z minus A is definitely analytic. Why is it definitely analytic? Fz is analytic, Z minus A is analytic in that region. Uh, so Z minus A of course is analytic everywhere, but the quotient will be analytic only when the denominator is not zero. And Fz by Z minus A is never zero in that shaded region because this function is zero, is the denominator is zero only when z equal to a and z equal to a is not in the shaded region. So we know that fz by z minus a is analytic in this region between c and c1. Uh, but then uh, we use Cauchy's theorem, one of the consequences of Cauchy's theorem, what did it say? So recall, if I have any analytic function in a region like this, then integral of the function of that analytic function along C is same as integral of the analytic function along C1. So that means you can shrink C to C1. We have seen this as a consequence of Cauchy's theorem by basically taking a cut here and making a new contour went round like this and came back like this and we saw that that new whatever function if it is analytic within this region then the full contour integral is zero and that contour integral is nothing but contour uh, uh, integral around c minus integral around c1 so integral around c will be same as integral around c1 all this we have seen before so this is what it is this now the function under consideration is going to be fz divided by z minus a so fz divided by z minus a is analytic in that region, annular region. So its integral over c is same as its integral over c1. This is what we can see by co uh, uh, consequence of Cauchy's theorem. But why did I do this? I did this because see c was an arbitrary simple closed loop. I didn't have any equations for this. If I want to evaluate this integral, I need to know something about c. Here what I did is I converted C into something whose equations I know. In fact, this equation of C1 is Z is equal to A plus R e power i theta because Z minus A is equal to R e power i theta. So that is what I will exploit. Once Z is equal to A R e power i theta along C1, dz is nothing but I R e power i theta d theta and theta varies from 0 to 2 pi. So you can see all that in this figure. When if theta is an angle starting say somewhere, it doesn't matter where, from here. So theta varies from 0 to 2 pi and z is equal to a plus r e power i theta, then I'll get c1. That's precisely what this is. In, uh, z is equal to a plus r e power i theta, dz is equal to i r e power i theta d theta and theta varies from 0 to 2 pi. Substitute all this in our RHS. So what do I get? Integral of fz by z minus a over c1 dz is equal to z is now on this contour on this circle z is a plus r e power i theta 
so z minus a is r e power i theta and dz as i just shown you is i r e power i theta d theta so you simplify this i comes out r e power i theta r e power i theta gets cancelled so i am left with f of a plus r e power i theta d theta and uh, integral limits over c1 means theta varies from 0 to 2 pi and this is true for all r greater than 0 what is true this integral being equal to this integral is true for all r i didn't i never said what is the va particular value of r only thing is i want r to be greater than 0 and the circle must be completely contained within c within that big contour that's all the condition was so this is true for all for all r greater than 0 so now i'll take limit r tending to 0 if i let limit r tending to 0 this integral will become fa integral of integrand will become fa so fa integral uh, 0 to so this integral will become i into uh, integral of fa d theta between 0 and 2 pi but fa is constant no so i can pull it out so i am left with d theta so integrate d theta i'll get theta between 2 pi and 0 i get 2 pi so this whole thing turns out to be 2 pi i times fa which basically means integral of f of z minus a so this is what we started with this is equal to i mean now i know this integral is equal to 2 pi i times fa so i'll write keep fa here and send 2 pi i to the denominator and i get this here so this is the proof of cauchy's integral theorem cauchy's integral formula uh, so this completes the proof now let's so there with two of the main theorems in this section out of way let us try to look at the various problems many of these problems i already solved them as a part of your course the course started even before this model question paper scheme so i thought these are important problems so i had solved them and then model question paper more or less same questions are there with slight modifications and some questions are new i'll tell you the solutions of them so in this question we are asked to find the image of w plane bounded by the lines x equal to 1 y equal to 1 x plus y equal to 1 under the transformation w equal to z square okay so let us first find uh, the image s of uh, x equal to 1 then we will find image of y equal to 1 then we will find image of x plus y equal to 1 under the tr transformation z square we have done these problems uh, we have proved it in general what happens uh, when x is constant what is the image of x is constant it's a parabola remember all these will be parabola so there will be a region bounded by three parabola uh, i'll leave that part to you but i'll show you the main mathematical working of it uh, so what do i do uh, basically first you write uh, in, in most complex analysis questions and problems this is how you have to start w is equal to u plus iv i am going to write down its real and imaginary part uh, z is x plus iy then u plus iv is x plus iy uh, whole square x square minus y square plus i times 2xy equating real and imaginary parts we have uh, so we basically want to find real and imaginary part of this parts of this uh, mm, w uh, so real part is x square minus y square and imaginary part is 2xy this is the standard thing to do and now this is this is uh, this is how u and v are related with x and y uh, so in this i want to take x equal to 1 see then the problem uh, i want to find images image of the in the w plane bounded by these lines so first i am trying to find image of these lines so x equal to image of x equal to 1 under this transformation is what i am trying to find right now i have found this transformation how do they look in what are the real part and imaginary part of this transformation now i have to put x equal to 1 in this uh, i put x equal to 1 in this and then try to eliminate y that will give me a relation between u and v that means it will tell me what is the image of x equal to 1 under uv plane which is w plane so here it here are the working we have done this but i'm just repeating it take x equal to 1 in that means in uxy which is x square minus y square is nothing but 1 square minus y square 
and v x y is 2 x y x equal to 1 so y is equal to v by 2. Now I want to eliminate y from these two equations. This is one is one equation is this and another equation is this. How do I eliminate? It's obvious. Y is equal to v by 2 so I substitute y equal to v by 2 in this. So I get u is equal to 1 minus v by 2 whole square which is you rewrite this whole thing in the standard form v square is equal to minus 4 u minus 1. Of course, this is a parabola in W plane which is symmetrical about the real axis with its vertex at 1, 0 and focus at the origin. Uh, in this lecture, I am not uh, showing you all the figures, but in the initial lecture which I gave, in that I have worked out these kind of details on the screen. So you please go back and see those lectures if you want. But I mean what I am trying to tell is I have already shown you v square is equal to minus 4 u minus 1 is precisely this parabola which is symmetrical about real axis you can see that real axis is u so if you put v plus or minus it is going to give you the same u so because v square is there and there is no v term uh, so it is symmetrical about uh, u axis that is real axis and its vertex is 1 comma 0 you put 1 u equal to 1 this will become 0 and uh, focus is the origin. These are standard results from your class 12 parabola equation e square equal to minus 4 x minus a will have something as focus, something as uh, uh, vertex and things like that. So I have re just rewritten that part. Similarly, you take y equal to 1 in the same set of equations in this equation u equal to x square minus y square and v equal to 2xy you take y equal to 1, you get uxy equal to x square minus 1 square and v is equal to 2x which is x equal to v by 2. Now, you want to eliminate x between these two. So, I can do the obvious x equal to v by 2, you substitute it back, you get v square equal to 4u plus 1. This is another parabola which is symmetric about real axis whose vertex is minus 1 comma 0. So, you have to draw these parabola. I am not doing that here today in this class, but I have done these kind of things before in my GeoGebra class, in the class in which I use GeoGebra. Next one is to find the image of x plus y equal to 1. You try to recall the problem x plus y equal to 1. So that is same as uh, y is equal to 1 minus x. x plus y equal to 1 is rewritten as y equal to 1 minus x and I substitute this in both u and v. So first u is x square minus y square which is x square minus 1 minus x whole square. y is nothing but 1 minus x. So you simplify this. this comes out to be 2x minus 1 which means 2x is equal to u plus 1 that is x is equal to u plus 1 by 2 and substitute this in v equal to 2xy v is 2xy so x is u plus 1 by 2 or rather I can say 2x is equal to u plus 1 and uh, y is equal to 1 minus x so 1 minus x is nothing but 1 minus u plus 1 by 2 so you simplify this you will get u plus 1 into minus u plus 1 by 2. Uh, so this is again your class 12 parabola theory theory of what is it called quadrix uh, not quadrix uh, theory of degree of two uh, conic sections will tell you this is a parabola symmetric about v axis now because it, uh, you uh, rewrite these things I will not spend time on that uh, and vertex at 0 half and opening towards the negative y axis now draw all these three parabola in your uh, uh, picture. So this is one parabola which is like this, this is another parabola which is like this and this is the third parabola and all the, the region bounded by these three parabola will give me the region which I am looking for. Discuss this transformation y equal to e power z with respect to the lines parallel to the coordinate axis in z plane. So this is another question, question number four. Uh, this we have done this more or same thing we have done so stand there are three uh, transformations which you have learnt in your uh, course e power z z square and uh, what is the other one uh, Shaukos, uh, that uh, Joukowsky transformation z uh, z plus 1 by z so one of these will definitely be there in your examination uh, in this particular paper they have asked about e power z so we will I'll very quickly show this this we have done this so I will not want to go through again in all detail so w is e power z uh, e power that is e power x plus i y uh, e power x into e power i y uh, which is e power x e power x into cos y plus i sin y uh, and find u and v as usual by writing w equal to u plus i v 
u x y is the real part e power x cos y v x y is e power x sin y uh, and you eliminate x and y that's what we have been doing all the time so first you want to eliminate x uh, to eliminate y is easy uh, both are easy to eliminate y basically you square both these and add them then i'll get a cos square y and a sin square y time both with the same uh, coefficient e power 2x um, so u square plus v square is equal to e power 2x that's what i'll get here uh, so to eliminate x <coughs> to eliminate x here uh, i just divide one by the other e power x gets cancelled so v by u is equal to tan y sin y by cos y so it will be tan y so i use so now what i what i wanted uh, here you wanted to discuss this transformation with respect to lines parallel to coordinate axis in z plane so parallel to coordinate axis means first parallel to x axis parallel to x axis means x is constant so you see if you put x equal to constant here i'll get u square plus v square is equal to some constant square constant square means so this is nothing but a equation of a circle in a in u w plane in uv plane so lines which are parallel to x axis get mapped to circles in w plane i think yeah that's what we have written here lines parallel to y axis are given oh first i seem to have written parallel to y axis so that is given by x equal to c uh, same thing so lines parallel to y axis are given by x equal to c a constant then one has u square plus v square is equal to e power c whole square which is a circle centered at origin and radius e power c so any line parallel to y axis will become a circle whose origin is whose center is origin and radius is e power c which is c where c is the distance from the y axis La similarly lines parallel to y axis are given by y equal to constant y here is in this particular case is y is constant means tan y is also constant tan y is constant means v by u is constant v by u is constant means v is equal to u times some constant which means it's a straight line passing through origin with slope tan c you, i mean it's y equal to mx form that's all so we have uh, this so we have seen it all in the main uh, class where i explained how to study this uh, transformations so here it's a quick recap of it so recall uh, pa lines parallel to y axis will become circles line pa lines parallel to x axis will become uh, straight lines passing through origin all this we have seen in geogebra 2 next question number 5 it says find the bilinear transformation which uh, maps the points 0 1 infinity into the points w 5 minus 1 3 respectively what are the invariant points under this transformation so these are two parts of the problem one you have to find the bilinear transformation which maps this to this and another is you have to find the invariant points under this transformation as i explained in the lecture there are two ways of doing one is you set up explicit equations taking 0 to 5 1 to minus 1 and uh, infinity to 3 infinity is always to be only property of infinity which you would be interested in these course is 1 by infinity is 0 so somehow infinity you have to make it 1 by infinity so you divide by something so that it will become 0 this is the standard trick which we have told in the which i have told you in the main course uh, i also told there is a formula which if you can remember it's very easy it's very easy to remember it's very symmetrical you see w minus w1 into w2 see here it is 1 2 3 here it is 3 2 1 in that order w minus w1 into w2 minus w3 divided by w minus w3 into w2 minus w1 same order instead of w's you have z's so a bilinear transformation mapping zi to wi z1 to w1 z2 to w2 z3 to w3 is given by this this is the formula you can try to recall remember or you will have to set up equations for each of z1 z2 and z3 so in addition to the uh, in this case one of the zis or wis is infinity remember which for example if z1 is infinity both the terms which contain z1 i'll have to treat it as one that means basically you divide by z1 so it becomes z by z1 minus one z2 by z1 minus one 
So z2 by z1 and z by z1 will become 0 because 1 by z1 is infinity, z, uh, 1 by z1 is 0 because z1 is infinity. So I will be left with minus 1 by minus 1 whose ratio is 1. So that means both these terms I will just consider it as if it is 1. So that is the only uh, constraint. So in this present case z3 is infinity in given problem. In this problem you see uh, z1, z2, z3 z1 is 0, z2 is 1, z3 is infinity and w1 is 5, w2 is minus 1, w3 is 3. So I substitute all these things there in this formula. So w minus w1 into w2 minus w3, w minus w3, w2 minus w1, z minus z1. Here there would have been a z2 minus z3 but since z3 is infinity I am taking this to be uh, 1 and similarly here also I would have had a z minus z3 which I am taking it to be 1 uh, and other term is here. So you substitute all these things which we have done these kind of problems so I won't spend too much time on this. Substituting all these you get w minus 5 into minus 1 minus 3 etc etc. You please be careful with signs which is what so it's better to write down in detail what is z1, what is z2, what is w1, what is w2, what is w3, what is z3. Of course here z3 is infinity so z3 will vanish in the sense from the formula it will vanish. So you just substitute all these things and then you know how to you know cross multiply, you simplify this cross multiply and make w the subject of formula. So you write w is equal to this. I have worked out, I think it is correct. You can quickly check whether this is correct because you are finally this transformation should take these three points to these three points. So check it's z1 equal to 0 that means you put z equal to 0 you get minus 10 by minus 2 which is 5 which is correct so it should be w1. z2 equal to 1 which means 9 minus 10 which is minus 1 so 3 minus 2 is 1 so minus 1 by 1 is minus 1 that's correct w2 and similarly uh, z3 is infinity uh, infinity means it is again 9, you would multiply, divide both numerator and denominator by z. So, you will get 9 minus 10 by z, 3 minus 2 by z. So, 10 by z and 2 by z becomes 0. So, I will be left with 9 by 3 which is 3. So, w3 is 1. So, z3 equal to infinity goes to w3 equal to 3. Do this final checking because in case you have made some small mistake here, it will show up here. This checking is very easy. Just check for each of these points that you get indeed these points that will help you and invariant points of this transformation how do I find invariant points of this transformation so this is I'll replace wz by z uh, replace wz by z I mean I want wz to be equal to z not replace I want invariant points means wz must be equal to z so I'll put 9z minus 10 divided by 3z minus 2 equal to z uh, so this turns out to be a quadratic equation in z. So I rewrite this, I have rewritten here, I hope I have written it correctly. Please check that yourself. 3z square minus 11z plus 10 equal to 0. Its roots are minus b plus r minus root of b square minus 4 ac by 2a. Uh, so I used that formula, quadratic formula and got 2 or 5 by 3. Just check once whether this is correct again. Put z equal to 2 here. 9 2s are 18, 18 minus 10 is 8 and uh, 3 2's are 6, 6 minus 2 is 4, so uh, what did I get here, 8 by 4 is 2 which is correct because 2 is fixed then. Similarly you check for 5 by 3 also very easy to check, 9 into 5 by 3 minus 10 divided by 3 into 5 by 3 minus 2 is clearly 5 by 3, so I am done again. So these two are fixed points, so invariant points are fixed points, both are the terms used for these kind of points. So one can uh, check these things very easily, don't forget to check in your exam because even if you have made some small numerical mistake it will show up in this. And here is another question, find the bilinear transformation which maps points z equal to infinity i0 to into the points w equal to minus 1, uh, minus i and 1 respectively, also find the fixed points of the transformation, it is the repetition of the same problem, so I use the same formula and here. Uh, uh, in this case I have z1 equal to infinity so this term and this term becomes 1 so which is what I have written here substitute rest of it z2 equal to i z3 equal to 0 w1 equal to minus 1 w2 equal to minus 1 w3 equal to 1 so you will get you write this and then 
of course in the usual way you will simplify it and write w z is equal to minus z plus 1 by z plus 1 check whether these points indeed go to these points that is important to do so z1 equal to infinity so infinity means these two terms are not there it will go to um, I mean not this way you divide this by z so these two terms are not there it will be minus 1 by 1 which is minus 1 which is correct w1 is minus 1 similarly z2 equal to i you put z i minus i plus 1 by i plus 1 you can go home and check that it is indeed minus i that's very easy to check and similarly w uh, z3 equal to 0 it's of course 1 there's nothing much to do there so these three points are indeed taken to these th that is z1 is indeed going to minus 1 z2 is indeed going to minus i z3 is indeed going to 3 that can be very easily checked so don't forget to check this in your examination and invariant points of this transformations as usual are given by you replace w by z means w z equal to z so this whole thing equal to z so z is equal to minus z plus 1 by z plus 1 it will always turn out to be a quadratic so just to close your eyes and write this quadratic formula uh, you will get minus 1 plus or minus root 2 these are the fixed points you can check whether these are the fixed points by putting z is equal to minus 1 plus or minus root 2 here and similarly here both clearly turn out to be the same thing okay this is uh, evaluate uh, oh so this is complex integration now uh, evaluate z bar square dz uh, from 0 to 2 plus i along the line x equal to 2y so first thing you must do is uh, try to draw a diagram uh, i've shown you how to do complex integration uh, first to draw a, a diagram here is the diagram i'm showing you so here it is so first i need to draw the line so line is uh, x equal to 2y yeah, that is along that line is where i want to uh, you see I want to integrate along the line x equal to 2y between the point 0 and 2 plus i so this is the line x is equal to 2y and I have the point z1 equal to 2 plus i this is the point and I want to uh, go from 0 0 to 2 plus i that's what I want to do uh, and I want to go along this path oh, sorry I want to take uh, this is some random point I written now I want to go from 0 0 to 2 plus i f is a function which they have given it's defined all over here remember what is function f f is z bar whole square z bar whole square that is complex conjugate of z whole square that's what it is uh, so that function is defined everywhere uh, basically when somebody asks you integrate means along this path that means at every point you have to find what is z bar square and add them together but of course it's an infinite sum so it doesn't work like that even though that's what intuitively it is uh, i will convert the given integral into uh, two uh, real integrals all complex integrals have to be converted to real integrals so by definition z bar square is uh, x minus i y whole square remember z bar is complex conjugate of x plus i y that means replace i by minus i so z bar square is x minus i y whole uh, z bar square will be x, x minus i y whole square which is x square minus y square minus i times 2 x y i'm using i square equal to minus 1 again and again uh, of course dz is equal to dx plus i dy if z is equal to x plus i y dz is dx plus i dy and the path is x equal to 2 y so now let's understand this figure in a better way so path means this point is moving from here to here and i want to convert it only in terms of x and y uh, so i want to see what is its x coordinate and y coordinate all these things i have to do this is what we have done already so i'm just showing you just to make sure that you have understood this see as a moves on this line a is moving you can see the red vector is the y coordinate of a and the green vector is the x coordinate of a so as it moves you can see how x is varying and y is varying as point a moves from origin to 2 plus i x is varying from 0 to 2 and y is varying from 0 to 1 you can see here when a is on 2 plus i value of y is 1 well the length of that uh, red uh, thing that is the y coordinate is length 1 and length of green coordinate is length 2 is is equal to 2 
so when point a moves from origin to 2 plus i i have x varying from 0 to 2 and y varying from 0 to 1 of course i'll use one of these for my uh, theorem for my solving the problem so path is x equal to 2y which means y varies from 0 to 1 for the given path so path is x equal to 2y so which means dx is equal to 2 dy now substitute all these things in the integral the integral is z bar square from 0 to 1 plus 2i dz so z bar is nothing but here i have worked it out x square minus y square minus i times 2xy and x equal to 2i substitute that here so x square is 2i whole square minus y square as it is minus i times 2 into x x is 2y and y is left out and then dx dz that is dx plus i dy dx is 2 dy plus i dy now evaluate all this so you'll get one horrible i mean uh, for this y uh, since i have taken variable to be y here i have thrown away x here it's thrown away means i substituted for x by some expression in y so the as we saw in the figure y is varying from 0 to 1 so <coughs> yeah, these are the integral limits so you carry out this integration this is class 12 11 12 integration so i don't think i'll write down the detail i mean i written down the details here i don't think i'll explain this part you please ch hopefully i've done it correctly uh, please check that i have done it correctly you can see the things here 2i square minus y square i simplified all these things try to take out whatever i can take out the const pulling out constants and integrate and this integral y square is y cube by 3 between limits 1 and 0 and 1 so it is 1 by 3 etc etc you check these things whether i have done it correctly here is the next question verify cauchy's theorem for 1 by z where c is the triangle with the vertices 1 by 2 3 by 2 and 1 by 4 ah this is a killer of a problem uh, very frankly i have not uh, managed to solve it completely but i'll tell you what are the uh, ingredients to solve the problem uh, the integrals become quite horrible actually uh, uh, the problem here is you see 1 by z uh, <coughs> it's easier to write this in terms of uh, uh, polar coordinates because i'm trying to integrate uh, 1 by z is you know z is e r e power i theta so 1 by z is 1 by r into e power minus i theta dz will be in terms of theta and uh, r so r, r is also constant because uh, if i am taking a circle i mean actually if c were a circle it would be very easy to use it use polar coordinates and solve this but here 1 by z is easier to write in uh, polar coordinates rather than in cartesian coordinates but the contour given is along lines parallel to x and y axis so the integrals can become quite unnerving mm. but in any case i have written down the integrals even though i have not managed to integrate them completely and give you the solution it was taking far too long time for me so i have written down the details you please uh, work out the finer details so here it is so what does one do what do we want to do let's first figure that out so i want to verify cauchy's theorem for this that means what does cauchy's theorem say cauchy's theorem say integral of fz dz over c is zero if fz is analytic within and on this contour c so this con uh, this is of course analytic everywhere except at z equal to zero except at z equal to zero it's defined everywhere and it's quotient of polynomials one and z so this is definitely <coughs> analytic everywhere except at z equal to zero and this contour 1 2 3 2 and 1 4 means the uh, triangle with these as the vertices maybe you want to see the picture once i can show you that uh, how do they look Oops, what happened so here it is uh, these are the point this is my coordinate system and here are the points a is 1 comma 2 b is 3 comma 2 and c is 1 comma 4 uh, and then i want uh, these uh, my contour is along from a to b to b to c to c to a so a to b i go like this b to c i go like this and c to a i go like this correct so this is the contour this is the triangle and then my point uh, 
where function is not analytic is the origin uh, and origin is clearly outside this contour uh, outside this uh, what is this called triangle so integral of 1 by z along this triangle must be zero by cauchy's theorem the question here is you verify this that this is true you verify that uh, see for example when i am going here when i am going here on this first i'll go from a to b and then i'll go from b to c uh, b to c from here b to c and then i'll go from c to a so i don't know where is that point you can see one point which will go from c to a will look like this this will be a point which is going from c to a so as i am moving along uh, con uh, integration over this whole contour is first you move from here to here so integral of fz dz over this contour is integral from a to b plus integral from b to c from in plus integral from c to a this is something which we have seen before but not exactly this problem uh, i'll show you this whatever uh, i have written here so cauchy's theorem says fz is analytic at all points if fz is analytic at all points inside and on, and on a simple closed curve then integral of fz over c is zero so given path of integration is indeed a simple closed curve as seen in this figure which i saw showed you just now one needs to check that this is what we want to verify 1 by z dz over c is equal to zero but this i can write it as integral from a to b b to c c to a i shown you where are a b c and things like that so let us go over carefully so fz is 1 by z it is uh, as i said it is analytic everywhere ex uh, inside this uh, contour so 1 by z is 1 by x plus i y which is 1 by x plus i y and i multiply and divide by x minus i y and write it i basically i want to open out it's real and complex part i have done it here x by x square minus y square minus y by i times y by x square minus y square and dz is equal to dx plus i dy now on a b that is when i go from uh, <coughs> the first a point a to point b x varies from 1 to 3 we have seen that in that figure uh, when uh, the point when i go from a to b you see when i am at a x coordinate is 1 and when I reach B, o, x coordinate is 3 and y is constant all through. y is equal to 2. So when I go on this path, remember y is 2 and x is varying from 1 to 3. So I am going to use that. So on path AB, uh, I have x by x square minus y square minus, I have this y equal to 2 and x varies from 1 to 3. Since y doesn't vary, y is a constant, dy equal to 0. So I put dy equal to 0 here. Uh, I'll get this integral x by x square minus 2 square minus i times 2 by x square minus 2 square. I am not good at integration, so I am not going to integrate this. I'll leave it to you. You integrate and find the value. And uh, similarly on BC, BC is what you check in the figure. BC is this. This, you have to write the equation of this line. See, the path is now point is going from here to here. Path, this you have to write the equation of this equation of this is clearly uh, x plus y equal to 5 means you can do you know how to write given two points 3 comma 2 and 1 comma 4 you know how to write the equation y minus y2 divided by y1 minus y2 is equal to x minus x2 divided by x1 minus x2 you know such formula so you write the equation it's very clear it's straightforward you can see x plus y equal to 5 and when x plus y equal to 5 that means y is equal to 5 minus x and when my point moves from here to here you see uh, x is varying from 3 to 1 when point f is on b x coordinate is 3 and as i move towards c the x coordinate has become 1 correct so that is what i have explained here so on bc y is equal to 5 minus x and x varies from 3 to 1 and dy is equal to minus dx uh, because you see here dy is equal to minus dx so i substituted all these things in that integral second integral that is this is the integral x by x square minus y square minus i into y by x square minus y square dx plus i dy i substitute y equal to 5 minus x 
and x is varying from 3 to 1 integral limits and dy equal to minus dx. I substituted all this and you find this integral. It's not difficult but it's very painful for me so I have not done this part. So just evaluate this integral you will get x by x square minus some x square will get cancelled actually. So you use your class 12 integration uh, uh, knowledge and uh, do this. Similarly on CA I will only explain the complex analysis part for it. You do the actual class 12 integration part. So from C to A when it is moving, when my point is moving from C to A, you see X remains constant, X equal to 1 and Y varies from 4 to 2. So that is what I will use. Uh, y varies from 4 to 2 and uh, uh, X is equal to 1. So substitute X equal to 1 in this and uh, Y is varying from 4 to 2. So you take this integral and uh, if x equal to 1 then dx equal to 0 so I will get only i dy so integrate all these things with respect to y you will get some number so all of them sum should become 0 so this evaluation of the integrals I have not done explicitly here due to lack of time but it can be done so I will not bother about that so this is how you verify uh, Cauchy's theorem and now uh, next question is evaluate e power 2z by z plus 1 into z minus 1 dz where c is a circle mod z equal to 3. I recall this we have solved this very problem in our course. So I just very briefly going through this c is the circle centered at 0 with radius 3. Remember the mod z equal to 3 means center 0 and radius 3. So and uh, center 0 and radius 3 means both minus 1 and 2 are inside C clearly distance between minus 1 and 0 is 1 distance between 2 and 0 is 2 both are less than 3 so both are inside C. Now how do I uh, carry out this integration this I mean how do I uh, I mean I obviously I want to use Cauchy's integral formula Cauchy's theorem something I want to use for any of them I want need a linear term in the denominator how do I make sure that I get linear term. So basically resolve the integrand as a partial fraction. So I have not returned on the details here but in the main course I have actually done the very same problem so I am going very quickly over here. e power 2z by z plus 1 into z minus 2 I mean basically partial fraction 1 by z plus 1 into z minus 2 is going to be 1 by 3 1 by z minus 2 minus 1 by z plus 1. So I substituted all this and now you use Cauchy's integral formula to evaluate each of the integral because you take fz equal to e power 2z this is analytic everywhere so it is analytic everywhere inside c also but this whole thing is not analytic of course because 2 z equal to 2 is a point within the c so i use cauchy's integral formula for this and similarly minus 1 is a point within the c so this also i will use cauchy's integral formula so i have written this so i'll just show you the slide e power 2z z etc etc this i have written this down here so this is nothing but 2 pi i times value of f at 2 and value of f at minus 1. Uh, uh, this is, this we can see it on the screen. So the value of this f of 2 is e, uh, I mean, this is f of z. So if you put z equal to 2, I get e power 4. And similarly, you put z equal to minus 1, I get e power minus 2. So that's what it is with the 2 pi i by 3 outside. 1 by 3 comes because of partial fractions. Anyway. Uh, question 10 is this is some problem which yeah this is also a problem which we have done in the course 1 by z square minus 4 dz over c where c is the curve z plus 2 equal to 1 uh, recall z mod z plus 2 equal to 1 is a circle whose radius is 1 and center is minus 2 uh, so as usual you resolve uh, you know you have to use Cauchy's integral formula or one of them so denominator is not a linear term so you want a linear term so what do you do so you try to uh, write this as a partial fraction. I have written the uh, details here. 1 by z square minus 4. Is, you do this. We have done this. Uh, we know how to get a uh, fraction as partial. Resolve it into partial fractions. I have done this here. You can see. I can check whether I have done it correctly. So uh, curve C is mod z plus 2 equal to 1. Uh, which is a circle with radius 1 and centered at minus 2. Uh, so radius 1 centered at minus 2 means minus 2 lies inside and 2 lies outside. So why do I need, why I am interested in minus 2 and 2? You see denominator one, one thing as z minus 2, another thing as z plus 2. So this I am interested in 2, this point and a question is 2, here point and a question is minus 2 because z minus a, recall, remember that. Uh, 
uh, so co by Cauchy's theorem this first integral will become 0 because 2 is not within this circle. So within this circle 1 by z minus 2 is indeed an analytic function by Cauchy's theorem this becomes 0 and by Cauchy's integral uh, so this will not become 0 by Cauchy's integral Cauchy's theorem because this is not analytic within the circle because minus 2 is a point within the circle but then I can use Cauchy's integral formula for this basically evaluate with f z equal to 1 which is a constant of course so you have this result uh, uh, this final answer dz by z square minus 1 is minus pi i by 2 and question 11 is find bilinear transformation which maps z equal to 1 i minus 1 into the point 0 1 infinity respectively what are the invariant points under this this is like repetition of the same question so it's, uh, this here is a formula and you know what is z1 z2 z3 w1 w2 w3 and then that uh, here there are no infinity is it yeah there is w3 is infinity so these terms become 1 and I substituted that and you do the usual write w is equal to solve for w and write w equal to some expression in z and check checking is important for you please do that and to get fixed points you solve z is equal to the same w z so you get a quadratic equation and then write the roots of the quadratic equation question 12 is again find bilinear transformation which maps points this into this here no, no infinity so you have to use all three uh, uh, slots so here it is the same uh, problem I mean, different numbers but same problem uh, so I have done it here and I hope I have done it correct I have checked with the final uh, thing i and 2 i are actually indeed uh, fixed points for this and this transformation indeed takes these three points to these three points z1 to w1 z2 to w2 z3 to w3 so uh, I think I mean I managed to solve all the problems in this two model question paper uh, I have shared the solutions with you please make use of it but again I'll uh, tell you that you shouldn't peek at the solutions first you should try to solve from this two model question papers you can see that you know one of the theorems will definitely come and there will be at least one question on trying to find bilinear transformation given three points where which three points it goes and try to find what are the invariant points and then also there is question on some simple uh, complex integration which you will always convert to real uh, two real integrals and carry out the integration uh, these are standard kind of questions which asked in this course please make use of it and thank you for listening to through the course and if you have any doubts anytime please feel free to contact me on this uh, email i'll be happy to take your questions and uh, whatever answer i know i'll share it with you